Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Adam Schaefer, and we've got a video today, you guys, to address those forearms. So if you have weak forearms or if those are the limiting factor in your guys' deadlift or pull-ups or any movements that require you to use good grip strength, this is the video for you. So this is a great video. Sal's gonna go over four different movements that we highly recommend to develop that forearm strength or just to develop your forearms in general. The first movement that he's gonna go over is a pretty standard movement you've probably seen before. It's a reverse curl, but he does have some basic tips on there to make sure you guys pay attention to that, some of the cues that he goes over. The second video, he gets into a wrist curl. This is done a little bit different and unconventional, so make sure you guys watch all the cues there. The third one, very unique and different. In fact, I had never even seen this movement until Sal had showed me this, and that's a kettlebell hammer. That's what we call this movement. Great, great exercise. And then the last one are t-shirt hangs. So these four movements are incredible movements to develop your forearm strength. Make sure you guys watch the video, pay close attention to all the details. If it's a video that you guys liked or it helped you out, please like the video before, share it with your friends. We're dropping information all week long. All right, so like this is epidemic right now in gyms of people with weak hands. I see everybody using wrist wraps when they're doing lots of back exercises and deadlifts and the reason why they say they're using these things is because their backs or legs are too strong for their hands. Now, uh, I think this is absolute baloney. Now, for them, that may be true, but that's only because they've been using wrist straps and they haven't been trained their hands uh, like they train the rest of the body. Now, keep in mind, if you train your hands and you train your grip like you train the rest of your body, your hands can handle tremendous amounts of load. Now studies also show that when, you, when we use aids like wrist straps to lift heavy weights, it actually changes the recruitment patterns all the way up into the shoulder. Now is this a good or bad thing? Probably a bad thing because if in real life you go to use your hands to grab something real heavy and you have a recruitment pattern that's used to using an aid like a wrist strap, you could increase your risk of injury. Basically the way I look at it is if you can't hold on to something, then you probably shouldn't be lifting it or at least you can't lift it. So I'm gonna show you a few exercises that you can do to build your grip, hand, and forearm strength. But let me tell you, it takes a little bit of time, especially if you've been using wrist straps for a long time. It takes some time, but when you get your grip really strong, you start to feel more connected to the weight that you're lifting. You start to develop more back muscles. Uh, you watch your deadlift start to increase. Um, it's actually a great thing. And again, of course, in terms of functionality in the real world, if you can't hold on to something, then you can't lift it anyway. So first exercise I like to teach people is a very basic movement. It's a reverse curl. Now a, re a reverse curl does work the brachialis muscle here, but it also works another muscle called the brachioradialis muscle, which is this kind of meaty muscle at the top of my forearm. Um, and it just looks impressive, but this is a muscle we're gonna focus on right now. Now you see a lot of people doing a reverse curl and they'll take a, th a full grip with their thumb underneath the bar. I like to tell people to go thumbless when they do this because it forces them to grip the bar a little bit tighter, which works the grip uh, simultaneously. Now with the reverse curl, you wanna keep the elbows pinned at your sides, nice tall posture, and you curl up and you treat this just like you would with a barbell curl. So just like with curls, you can do whatever rep range you're working on, eight to 12, uh, or even lower if you wanna focus on strength, but you will feel it working the tops of your forearms, and in particular, the brachioradialis muscle. So let's talk about the opposite side now of the forearm, which are the forearm flexors. These are the muscles that curl your wrist forward. Also very important uh, to develop this. Also, by the way, I wanna make this point. When you wear short sleeves, it's your forearms that most people can see, and statistically speaking, when they ask, uh, and this is for you guys out there, when they ask women, hey, what muscles do you find most attractive in men? Believe it or not, Forearms and hands kind of rank uh, up near the top. So this is also an attractive muscle, guys, so don't neglect them. So here's a great exercise for this part of the forearm. I'm gonna turn my body, but what you're gonna see me doing is I'm gonna grab the bar and I'm gonna do a wrist curl behind my back. So I'm grabbing the bar here. I'm gonna stand with tall posture and behind my back, thumbless grip. I'm gonna curl up as high as I can, pause and bring it right back down. And that, that's actually one of my favorite exercises for the top of the forearms. Now, let's also look at, because we just worked on extension and flexion, but there's this lateral position here with the forearms that's also very important to giving you strong grip and strong wrists. 
And uh, in order to do this, I'm going to be using a kettlebell, but really what you want to use is something that's offset loaded. So what I mean by that is a dumbbell won't work really, really well because a dumbbell has weight on both sides. If you have adjustable dumbbells at home, what you can do is you can load just one dump side of the dumbbell so that it's heavier on one end. A kettlebell works really well, uh, although most kettlebells are probably too heavy for most of you to do this exercise. But let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. So I like a kettlebell because obviously most of the weight is way out in here. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to keep my elbow bent on my side, nice and tight, and I'm going to let my wrist bend laterally, and then I'm going to bend it up laterally again. And you can see some of the muscles working in the forearm. This exercise I learned a few years ago from a friend of mine who's a competitive arm wrestler. And since I've been doing this, I've noticed uh, just far more stability in my grip when I do heavy back exercises. Now, of course, there are different types of uh, muscle contraction that you want to work on. When you're working any muscle, there's the concentric contraction, which is the type of contraction that flexes a muscle. There's eccentric, which is when you lower or lengthen uh, the muscle or when you lower a weight. And then there's isometric, being able to hold. Now, obviously with the grip, uh, they all contribute to each other, but the part that we probably need the most is that isometric, the ability to be able to squeeze and hold on to something for long periods of time, especially if you're doing a long, uh, you know, back workout. There's lots of different ways you can do this. Lots of people like to do, you know, where they hold on to a bar for long periods of time or they'll pinch, you know, weights for long periods of time. Um, those are all great, but I discovered the next exercise through training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now, when I used to compete in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and, and in Judo, uh, those are very grip-intensive sports. Obviously, they have a gi on, you're constantly fighting for grips, and if your hands give out on you in a Jiu-Jitsu tournament or in a Judo fight, you're done, you're screwed. No matter how good your technique is, you have, it's a, you're going to have a very difficult time with, when you lose your grip. And so one thing I used to do to work on that was I would take my gi and I would hang it over the top of a pull-up bar and I grabbed the gi and hold on to it. And what I found was gripping onto fabric was so different and holding on was so different from then just holding onto the bar. And so you can modify this yourself. And so what, I, what I'm gonna show you here is I got two t-shirts hanging over the bar and I'm gonna use those to strengthen or to work on my isometric strike. So I'm gonna hold on nice and, nice and high up towards the bar with these t-shirts. I'm gonna let myself hang slowly and then I'm just gonna hang. I took my feet off the floor, now I'm just hanging. And you wanna do this for time. So I'm gonna hold this for, typically I'll hold this for 30 seconds to a minute, and it really gives my grip a gnarly workout. Now, one thing I do wanna say when it comes to grip training or hand training is don't go to failure. Your hands get a lot of work, especially if you stop using wrist straps. Your hands are gonna get a lot of work from your reg regular workouts, and you're gonna start to get sore, and you can overwork them just like any other muscle. Going to failure seems to be too much intensity for most people. So let's say I can do this, something like this, and hold on, and let's say the max I can hold on uh, to the you t-shirts know, is maybe a minute. Well, I'm not gonna do sets of a minute. I'm gonna do sets of maybe 35 or 40 seconds. So it's gonna be intense, but not too intense. And I'm gonna do sets of that. And I'll find, you'll find, if you do it that way, that every week you should be able to increase your time with that same type of intensity. Now, as far as frequency is concerned, if you're really serious about training your hands and your forearms, uh, two to three days a week is plenty of work. If you're doing heavy back work on top of that, then maybe even less. So if you're doing heavy deadlifts and you've been using wrist straps, just taking the wrist straps off alone will build your grip strength. So that could be considered a bit of a, a hand uh, workout or a forearm workout. Maybe throw in another workout during the week where you're targeting just the forearms, just the hands, Give it a shot, watch what happens. You will develop more muscle in your forearms, but you will also feel more connected to your lifts and you'll have real world strength that, uh, that actually translates to the real world. And again, I love saying this, if you can't hold on to it, then you can't lift it. Look, if you have any questions, put it in the comments below. Share this video with your friends who like to use wrist straps and who brag about their deadlifts and how strong they all the time. Show this to them and tell them, look, your deadlifts mean nothing because you can't hold on to the bar. Also. Subscribe to this channel. We post new videos all the time.